Good morning, Physics 20, and happy Friday. So welcome back to my home office. And today we're going to, oh, hi, Freya. Freya says hi, too. See, Freya's here, too. I'm going to throw my notes on the floor. Yes, because we're, we're a silly dog. Hi, Freya. So welcome back to my home office, where we are today going to look at systems and pulleys. As you can see by the notes that are on the background there, hi, Freya. Yeah, she didn't start coming up and uh, sticking her sno snoot onto the counter of my desk until I started filming, because dogs, right? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we can see with pulleys and systems, we're going to be dealing with items that are going to be having forces that are going to be changed direction by a pulley. And we're also going to be dealing with objects that are going to be attached to each other now. Okay. So a couple keywords. We have a system. Now these are going to be two or more masses and they're going to be connected to each other. Okay. So on this case, it's most likely going to be by a string. And when you apply to a force to one object, it's going to cause all objects to experience that same force. And therefore, they're going to be accelerating with the same direction and magnitude. So ladies and gentlemen, please put a big star there. That's the entire concept of this whole thing. Now, you still need to have a free body diagram. You still need to have a net force equation. It's absolutely vital to do that in order to solve these problems. Okay, so the best way to learn how to do this is by jumping into the deep end, right into some calculations. Okay, now with your free body diagrams, you are going to have at least part of it drawn with you. So here is your system. Here's mass one and there is mass two. Okay, now let's think about what this mat, what is going to be happening here. So you can see that mass two is attached to mass one by a string, and that mass two is going to be pulling down on mass one. Now, if you guys want to see actually how this works in person prior, oh, hi Freya, what a nice gator. I'm trying to record here. She brought me her stuff later. Yes, because you're a good girl, Freya. Yeah, are you a good girl? You're bringing me a stuffed gator? Yes, you're a good dog. Okay. Okay. Go get your gator. Come on, go get it. Okay. So if you want to see exactly how this works in person before looking at it in a diagram, then um, I would go and watch our next video, which is going to be a lab involving my kitchen table and a couple books and some string. Well, lab demo, I guess. Who's a good dog with a gator? Yes, you are. And we're going to slobber on the arm of my chair too. Okay. So this mass here is going to be applying a force to mass one. So there's two ways to do this. You can not draw this next piece and just think logically about our change in direction. Or we can redraw this guy if it's going to make your life easier. So that way, it's as if mass 2 was out this way. Because M2 is going to be pulling on mass 1, that's technically actually on the X. Okay, I know it seems super weird, but it's applying forces on mass 1 as if it was the X. So that pulley there is only going to be changing the direction. It's taking the force, which is pulling down on this string, and is redirecting it. So that way it's actually applying a force to M1 on the X. Okay, so when we have our FG2, it becomes very, very important to label these guys as what diagram or which mass we're looking at here. Okay, so MG2 or M2 is going to be experiencing FG2. Go get it, Freya. Go get your, go get your gator. Now, M1 has a lot more going on to it. We're only really going to be looking at FG2 here. Okay. And if you were ever asked uh, about questions about tension on the string, what it really is meaning is the force applied on the string. Okay. Which would then be equal to the force of friction on this block here. Okay. So that's what it would be asking for. Lessons at hand. 
Okay. So our force of friction, so F, come, oh, come on, computer, you're doing the thing. There we go. So our FF on one is going to be there. M1 is going to have a normal force and it's also going to have FG as well. So when we're going to be dealing with the Y, we're going to be focusing on the FN and FG on mass one. We're not going to be dealing with a ton of Y on M2 because note that pulley is going to be applying as if it's on the X here on mass one. So our F net equation, ladies and gentlemen, our F net on the X is going to be F G2. This guy here is FG1. So FG2 then plus your negative force of friction. FG2, the force of gravity 2 on this object is going to be pulling it this way. Okay. So that is our F net on the X. Friction is going to be preventing that motion. On the Y, so our F net on the Y, is going to be our F N plus our negative F G one. Okay. You have to be very, very cautious here, ladies and gentlemen, about labeling those F G's. If you don't label an F G as either one or two, I am not going to be able to know which one you're using. And trust me, you guys are going to get confused and start writing the wrong mass in places and it's going to cause you suffering. So make sure you label your ones and twos, your FGs. Okay. All right. So let's scroll down a bit and we're going to look at if our entire system is accelerating with a magnitude of 1.35 meters per second squared. What is the force of friction acting on mass one? Okay. So let's label out what we have here. So we have the value of mass one, which is 0 0.5 kilograms. Okay, you'll see that in your diagram at the top, uh, bottom left hand corner there. You have mass two as 1.5 kilograms. And we have the acceleration, which is going to be your 1.35 meters per second squared. Now we've been given the magnitude of the acceleration, but based on the diagram, we can assume it's going to be accelerating to the right. Okay. And I'm going to give it its direction. There we go. It's accelerating to the right. So let's think for a moment. What do we need? Hmm. Well, we need force of friction. Is that on the X or on the Y? That's on the X. So let's write our F net equation on the X. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, the force that's going to be pulling that brick forward is our FG2. Minus our force of friction. So we're trying to find that force of friction. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, our F net on the X is equal to MA. There's our A. Now, this is where we need to be cautious here, ladies and gentlemen. We need to be very cautious. These objects are going to be accelerating at the same rate. Okay, so A is going to be the same for both of them. But we are asking for the force of friction on mass number one. So I am going to put, oops, excuse me. Let's try this again. Ah. So this is where it becomes vital. This is our, the whole system is accelerating together. That is our mass total. Okay. So our M total is going to be your two kilograms. We're adding the two, this 1.5 and that five together. Because the system is accelerating as a whole, that has to be your mass total. Okay, the mass of the total system. Watch the masses here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the trickiest part. Okay, so that MA, that F net, everything's accelerating together. You must use the total mass. Less than subtle hint. That's really important, guys. Make a note there, star pound, exclamation point. Okay. So now FG2 is going to be M2 
2 times g. Okay. Now that is going to be important. Don't get your masses mixed up. Now we're trying to find our force of friction. Okay. Now we're going to look at a slightly different way of rearranging this equation, ladies and gentlemen, from how we did last the last couple of videos. The last couple of videos, uh, we switched our negatives at the end. This time, I'm going to rearrange it so that way I get rid of my negatives at the beginning. So just, just shake it up a little bit. Okay. I am going to add force of friction here. And then I'm going to add force of friction here. So my force of friction plus MA is going to equal M2G. Well, now I'm going to move my MA over by subtracting that. Now, this is MT, ladies and gentlemen. So MT mass total times acceleration. So my force of friction is going to equal M2G minus mt mass total times acceleration. Okay. Yeah, that cancels. So now I'm going to put my numbers in paying excessively close attention to where my masses are coming from. So my force of friction is equal to m2 which is 1.5 kilograms. And I'm going to multiply that by my G, which is going to be my 9.81. And then I'm going to subtract that times two. That's my mass total, ladies and gentlemen, times that acceleration of my 1.35. Oops, I'm going to move this up before I write on my face. There we go. Okay. Be cautious with putting this into your calculators. You're going to likely wind up with really wonky numbers if you aren't cautious. Okay. So my force of friction, ladies and gentlemen, once you've correctly put this into your calculators, 12.015 dot, 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 newtons. Now, I said force of friction in the question. I didn't say magnitude of force of friction. So I want direction, please. So this means you are going to, and sig digs, and units, all the things. So we're going to need your, when you look at your question, we originally have three sig digs in our masses. Um, so 12.0 newtons. And we want our direction. Now notice our original direction is to the right and friction is to the opposite direction, which is going to make it left. Box your answer so I know what you want me to mark. Okay. So I know this stuff is tricky, ladies and gentlemen. You may want to watch this video a couple times or this portion a couple times before we go on to the next one, because this next video is going to be a little bit tricky. So what I would do, pause, restart the video, watch the next section again, and then we're going to go on to the next one. Okay? Cool beans? Cool beans. All right, so I've assumed, ladies and gentlemen, that you guys have now paused the video, gone back and watched it a couple times before we do our next one, because this one is going to be a little bit trickier. We've got a lot more stuff going on here. So uh, let's get a pen. And a two kilogram mass is placed on a level table and is attached by a string passing over the edge as illustrated in the diagram. The coefficient of friction between the two kilogram mass and the table is 0 0.12. Calculate the magnitude of acceleration on the five kilogram object. Okay. Now, the tricky part here, ladies and gentlemen, is I have said calculate the acceleration on the five kilogram object. However, that bit is a distractor. What I am looking for here is actually going to be your total acceleration because both the five kilogram and the two kilogram are attached by a string. So they are accelerating together. That's the big piece about this. 
Okay. Now our free body diagram is just going to mean uh, drawing our labels on this diagram. I'm going to choose to give these guys numbers. So I'm going to give this guy a object number of one. That's my mass number one. And this is going to be my mass number two. So that's going to be really important when I'm writing out my numbers. So M1 is two kilograms and M2 is five kilograms. So then I'm using constantly one and two instead of two and five in my labeling, okay, which I personally find kind of annoying. All right, so let's draw a free body diagram. Let's do the easy one first. So this guy is going to be experiencing normal force from the table. He is going to be experiencing gravity and he's going to be experiencing friction. So this is one, this is FG one, and we can sure label that one one as well. Now you can choose, you can either choose to have FG two going this way and making it and thinking logically here that, okay, well that right here, right here, that's where the direction's changing and really FG two is just pulling across the string. Or if you find it easier, you are welcome to switch this and write our five kilogram mass here and then label our FG2 going that way. So if it's easier for you to see that FG2 is actually on the X, you are welcome to do so. Okay. So we've been asked to um, calculate our acceleration of this guy and magnitude of acceleration, not direction. Okay. So we've got ourselves an issue. Hmm. Okay. So what we want acceleration is equal to F net or mass. Well, we know the mass of the total system is going to be five kilograms, five kilograms, seven kilograms. Let's write this down right now. MT is going to be seven kilograms. Okay. So what we need to get our F net. Now think here, ladies and gentlemen, the F net that we are going to be interested at this point to get our acceleration is going to be on our X. Okay. So let's write the F net equation for the X. So F net is going to equal my what? What is it going to be? You got it? Get FG2. Okay, which this guy needs a 2. So FG2 minus your force of friction. Force of friction is pulling back this way, and FG2 is going to be pulling this 2 kilogram block this way. Okay. All right, this is where it's gonna get a bit tricky here. You have been asked to calculate the acceleration. Well, my F net is going to equal MT times the acceleration. So that's what I'm trying to find. Now let's think about my M2, MG2, FG2. I can take FG and I can break that down into MG. So M of two, once again, watch that. That's going to be that five kilogram object is M two times G minus. Now the force of friction. Okay. Now our force of friction, we have mu, we have the coefficient of friction, but we don't have our normal force. Okay. So, well, I, let's write this down here just for now. So F N times mu is going to be my normal force, or excuse me, my force of friction. Well, let's come over here and think about my Fn. I'm going to need my F net on the Y here. Now on the Y, when we go back up to our diagram here to look at F net on the Y, we have our Fn and Fg right here for object number one. 
This is not hovering very well. There you go. That is what we need to look at for a Y. That is now it is not is object number one is our two kilogram mass accelerating upwards or downwards through the table. No, it isn't. Not at all. Shaking my head and doing that is not easy. Um, so we are going to have an F net on the Y of zero. So I'll scroll back down so you can see the calculations. Uh, which is going to be pen. So Fn minus Fg. F net is zero. So then I can add my Fg over here. So that would mean my Fn is going to equal my Fg of object number one. Now Fg of object number one is going to equal m of object number one times g. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that in my equation to replace that fm. So mta is equal to m2g. That's a two, it's not an equal sign. Let's make that look a little bit neater as it looks an equal sign right now. There we go. So M2G minus M1G times mu. Okay. So once again with physics, ladies and gentlemen, the hardest part is often getting this set up as opposed to um, actually doing the math. Okay. Well, now I'm trying to find my acceleration. So now I can just rearrange this equation to get my acceleration. So I'm going to divide by my m total. Okay, I want you guys to pay attention here. Do not cancel out the masses because we have m2 and m1 are different values and m2 is a different value. Don't cancel out masses. You can't do that. Okay, except for that one. Okay. So your acceleration is going to equal m2g minus m1g mu divided by your total mass. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down and I am going to put my numbers in. Okay, to get our acceleration. So m2 Two, ladies and gentlemen, pay very close attention here. This is where I see a lot of mistakes is even just putting the numbers in after. So five is M2 minus 9.81, or minus times 9.81. M1, ladies and gentlemen, is two kilograms times our 9.81 times your mu mu is going to be 0 0.12. Okay, that's given to you in the question. We divide the lot by our mass total, which is 7. Okay, be careful with this one in your calculator. My advice would be brackets 5 times 9.81, bracket, minus, bracket, 2 times 9.81 times 0.12, bracket, enter. Divide by 7, enter. That way you're not going to have any pesky bed mass problems. If you do it that way, you are going to be fine. If you don't put the brackets in exactly as I just said, you even go back and re-listen to that and write that down. Because if you put the brackets, if you put the brackets anywhere else, anywhere other than I just said, you're going to get this question wrong. Be careful with your brackets. Okay, so your final answer, once all is said and done, is going to be 6.6708 dot, 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 dot. Let's get our final answer all pretty. So when we go back to our original question, uh, we've got two sig digs, and that's what I want there. That seven is gonna round up to 6.67. Watch your rounding, guys. Don't lose half a point there. 
meters per second squared. And the question specifically asks for the magnitude of that acceleration. So we do not need direction. And we box your final answer. All right. I know this stuff is tricky, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this video a couple times. And I'm also going to um, get a little another field trip ready for you guys, except this time it's going to be to my kitchen table where we're going to have a couple of books set up with some string and some tape. And we will observe this and we will discuss our forces. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, no fires, injuries, or explosions. See you in a few once I can actually turn this thing off. Don't stop. It won't stop recording. All right. See you later.